Hey guys, and welcome back to our Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be doing kind of a part 3 to some previous tutorials which I've made. So previously we've made this boarded up door where we can go up to it and press E and the boards will be removed. And then people were asking if we could also add it so we use a crowbar to remove them. So in the last episode, I then also set up a very basic crowbar system, which I'll show you now. We just have the system which the crowbar will bob up and down. And if we press left click, it's going to go forward. A set amount of distance we can change whenever we like. So we've set up the basic boarded up door, which you're going to need for this video, and also this crowbar system, which again you will also need. So I'll leave a link to both of those in the description down below, and they'll probably also be in the top right hand corner of your screen if you press the little I button. So I'd recommend go watching those with the boarded up door first, and then the crowbar, although the order doesn't matter too much. And then today we're going to be merging them so that we can then use the crowbar to knock down these boards off of the door and open it up. Now you can see it's a little bit violent, they kind of just fly off a bit. However, this is a very basic system in which you can adapt upon and make it much better for you. So we can try to open it, we're going to get the locked door sound effect, and then we can just knock off all of these boards using the crowbar and open the door. So again, this is what we're going to make today. Again, very easy to just build on and customize to get it perfect for you. But we're going to be creating this very basic system today in which we can just knock off these boards using our crowbar, and until we knock them off, the door's going to be locked. And as you can see, we don't have any glitches walking through them and they don't get stuck on the door, all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our door blueprint, which we've made previously. So I named mine board door BP, so I'm going to open it up in here. And you can see this is the code for our crowbar, which we created in the last episode. So again, if you haven't got that, I'd recommend watching it now. In here, we're going to make some slight changes. So the first one we're going to do is up in our comment of open door if close enough, you can see we have boards equals zero false remove boards so that obviously means if there are still boards on the door we're going to remove them we want to delete the remove boards there as we're not going to remove them by pressing e anymore what we want here instead is out of the false we're going to get a play sound at location and this is just going to play the sound of the door being locked this isn't necessary you don't need to do this if you don't want however it's just a nice little feature to add in because it kind of signifies to the player that you can open this door however it's locked at the moment so I'm going to change this to be my locked door sound effect which I have here which I'll leave a link to in the description down below as it's from freesound.org. The location is just going to be get actor location so wherever the door is is wherever the sound effect is. We can compile and save that and now that means if we try to open the door with boards on it it's going to play that sound effect. And then what we want to do next is actually modify this remove boards from door comment down here. Now we're going to be changing it quite a bit as obviously this is just going to go down the list like this removing one by one when we press E, so we want to change that. But what we want to do first is create some box collisions onto the boards so we can interact with them. So I'm going to go to the viewport over here, zoom out a little bit, and all I'm going to do is just select board zero, add component, add a box collision, and as you can see that is parented to board zero, meaning that I can then just scale this up and it should be perfectly in the middle, so we can scale it up very easily to just keep it on there like so. As now this board has a very simple box collision around it like so. I'm going to rename that to be box zero for board zero. And if I go on board one, add component, box collision, doing the exact same thing of just scaling up to be the correct size I want. And again, because it's parented to it, this is very easy and simple to do just the way that we're doing it now. Leaving that as box one, select board two, get a box collision, and we're going to do this for every single board that we have. It's a very simple method of doing this, it just allows us to actually be able to interact with this with our crowbar a lot easier. And then finally board 3, and again do this for as many different boards as you have. And we just want to drag it out until we can see the box collision on all sides, like we have done here. And so now we have all of these box collisions on our boards like so. And then one final thing we need to do in here is select our door, so our door static mesh here, and we just need to change its collisions. And now we're changing it because otherwise the boards might glitch inside of the door and then break out a bit and not look good and just be really glitchy. So let's change the collision. So if we go to the collision on the door, we change the collision presets from block or dynamic to custom and if we press ignore up here and then just change the pawn from ignore to block. So what this means is that everything can pass through it apart from the player, which is what we want. We don't want the player to be able to walk through the closed door, but we want the boards to just pass through it because they're not going to like be completely in it. They might just have a corner go through which you won't really notice. However, if the collision's there, the corner going through will glitch out and then it will be very noticeable. So doing this is just a great little fix and we'll make it look a lot better. So we compile and that's all we need to do in the, in the viewport. So then we go back to the event graph and change this comment here. 
Like I say, we're going to be changing this quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is just remove this remove board's custom event there and disconnect the falses from all of these branches because we don't want them to be connected anymore. And then we'll leave the rest as it is. So the rest can be the exact same. We're just changing the start of it pretty much. And again, the false won't do anything because if we hit a board again, we don't want it to do anything because it is already simulating physics. So we'll just come out false. So what we want to do to start these instead is I'm going to right click box zero, the box collision we've just made and add event, add on component, begin overlap. I'm going to drag this up here. Other actor, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. And that is going to go into the branch. And that is that part done. So essentially, once our character overlaps with that box collision, it's going to remove the board. Now this does mean that even just walking into it is going to cause this as well. So what you could do is have the crowbar as its own separate blueprint, and then add that into the character blueprint so you can then use it and then cast to the crowbar blueprint here instead if you want it to be more precise and more specific. But this will be working great for us for the moment. So again, this is the basic overview because I just want to give you guys the core fundamentals of how this works, tips and tricks here and there of how to improve it to get it perfect for your own game because there are many different ways people would want to use this crowbar system. So instead of me going down one specific route which will only work for one type of thing, I'm going to give you a general overview so you can adapt this to get it perfect for your own type of game and for how you want to use it. And again, I'm always available to help if you want more specific help. So we're going to do the same thing for box one. So we right click box one, add event, add on component begin overlap. And what I'm going to do is drag that up here and I'm going to get all of the box collision events first before doing everything else. So then box two, add event, begin overlap. Box three, add event, begin overlap. And then select both of these and just drag them up here. Now what I'm going to do is select the cast and duplicate that by hitting Control C, Control V, and another three times down here, and just connecting these up the same way I have up there. So object will go into other actor execution in there, like so. Again, this just means that whenever we overlap with this board, it's then going to fire off the code that we want. And to make it fire off that code, we just need to connect the execution into the start of the branch here, like so, doing it for all of these that we have. And again, this just means that this will then work perfectly with our crowbar instead of having to press E. Then I'm just going to extend the comment to reach this as well. And I think that should be all good and done. So now if we hit compile, save, I'm going to put this door back into the level here and then we can hit play and test this out. So again, now instead of having to press E on the door to remove the boards, we can use the crowbar which we set up previously and it should then remove the boards perfectly how we want instead. So let's hit play and test this out. Let's see what happens, we go over, we hit the board with our crowbar and the boards get removed perfectly like so and then we can open the door. Hit play again so if we try to open the door before removing them we're going to get that sound effect and then if I hit one of the boards with the crowbar it's going to get removed like so working perfectly and as you can see they're not colliding with the door they're going straight through it and then we can walk straight through as well. So this works perfectly again very easy to build upon for yourself as well and I'm always happy to help if you want more specific help going down one of those other routes. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do. We've changed it so when we press E we get the locked door sound effect instead of removing the board and then we can just hit the boards with our crowbar or any other tool which we've set up and we can then remove these boards however we want instead in order to then open the door and again very basic system but easy to build on. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.